So now we have this bone structure set up. Uh, we have um, this sort of bend bone structure as well set up. What we're going to look at is actually making IK constraints. Uh, so we move certain parts of our animation. Um, it's going to move other parts as well in a more smooth and sort of fluid um, sort of way. So at the moment we've got set up here where we have to click up here, click to pause and move it, and it's you know it's quite clunky. If you move this, set it up. Um, you know, it, it becomes quite clunky. It's not free flowing. It's not fluid. Um, so what uh, Dragon Bones actually has is the ability to set up IK constraints, same as sort of Maya and stuff like you've seen it when you're creating animations. So what we want is we want to set a constraint on his, say, for this for example, set a constraint on his arm, and when we move that arm, it's going to move the upper and lower arm. You know, rather than just at the moment where we're set here, where we just it's just a bend rotates on this. Uh, so what we can do is click um, on the upper and lower arm. I'll just click the select tool. So I'll click over to select the Q. Click the bone for the upper arm and the lower arm. And then what you see is we have these options here on the left hand side, um, where we have the IK constraint. What we have is two options. So we have create IK by pick. So we can just select anywhere, um, and it creates the IK constraint there. Uh, works all right if you've got quite a few different things in one area. Um, you know, like like we've got here for this this section here, um, where we want different constraints. So we can have it off to one side, scale it up a bit, and then we can have that gizmo there for us if we need it. Uh, but that's not the one we're going to be using. So what we're going to be using is a different constraint, uh, a different sort of option for it. So what we'll do is select the upper arm and the lower arm, and we're going to want to create IK constraint at the end of the bone. So it says it creates a constraint right there at the end of the the last bone, uh, which you can then move. Uh, if you're doing what I'm doing, so I'm selecting it and, and shift selecting, um, it's not going to work. So what we're going to do is click the upper bone, click the lower bone with control. So we're all in control. And then click create IK constraint. What that'll then do is create the constraint for both. So you see here it moves a lot more fluid. We can do what we want with it now. If we want him to, for example, up in air, so he's jumping, it's, it's going to bring that lower arm. Uh, but one of the issues you might run into is selecting the bones in the wrong order. So say I go here, click the let's control Z a bit, and click over. I select this bottom arm here, and then select the top. So control click the top, and then click the IK constraint. It can make it backwards. It's not doing it as much here. Let's see if we can do it with another. We'll try with another section later on. But if you have to select in the order that you want it. So you want the upper arm, the lower arm. So if you hit the lower arm and then the upper arm, it's, it's going to be backwards. Um, it's not going to take much effect here, but when, we, when, you, when you've got like a, a quadruped or something, or something that's got a lot more uh, bones in it, you are going to need to, to make sure you're following the order that you, you want it to follow. So here we go. So we want to click the upper arm, click the lower arm, holding control, making sure controls are held in. So we've got the both highlighted. And create IK constraint at the end of the bone. And then what we can do is just we can move it about, makes it easier for when we're animating. You see it looks a lot more fluid, a lot more nice. Uh, you also have this option for weight. So if you've got a character that's like older, um, you know, a bit more heavier, like an ogre, so the character that's really slowly gonna move, it's heavy, you could paint and bring that weight down. So when then we bring that constraint up, it's slower, it's a lot less less fluid. You'll see the constraints here. Uh, with this, this orangey red line and the the actual sort of bones themselves and the characters a lot lower down so it works well for characters that are slow moving older and you know bigger built but we'll keep that at 100 we need to move as he should so it's nice little animation there um, we also have this option for bend uh, which is you can click it and it stops your character moving in a certain way so you can only bend in one way uh, but not really what we want for is Character here, um, it's only moving. You sort of see the elbows moving in the wrong direction, uh, but it is there. It's an option you can use. Uh, one of the issues you will run into uh, is worth noting is Dragon Bones only works. The IK construct only works with two bones. So if I put multiple bones in there, uh, let's do one. Let's add multiple bones in somewhere. Um, there we go. So say I don't know. I'm creating um, a character. I want this. This. I want the back to move fluid. So I'm having you know. I want to create the vert the bones in for each vertical that I have in the in the spine. So let's create that there. 
I'm creating multiple bones. I thought you could have worm like or a snake like creature, and you're gonna have your know, multiple sort of bones in there. Uh, these should all be parented. So if I try to IK constrain all of them, oh, let me come over here. If I click control, try and click more. You see that 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 option goes. Uh, whereas if I've got two selected, oops, I've got more than two because I'm holding control. Let's try that. Deselect and deselect. Go here. See, I've still got the option for two because I've got two boards. I can I can then create an IK constraint, um, which will then allow me to move it. Yeah, like that. But if I go in and I want to create more than one board, so I want to say three, we lose that option. Um, you will have to do the sort of pause way. So we select more. Just want these ones selected, and then bring it across. But which it's not obviously, you know, I wouldn't see it as a bad thing because if you are you creating a snake like creature or a, or a spine, it does still move fluidly, you know, and then what we can do, you know, we've got all selects there, but we might want to select like four and just move it, move the, the front sort of four, is that four or five? Yeah, and you can individually select. So you, it, that is an issue that you will run into if you create multiple bones for like a spine system or you're creating a worm or a, uh, a snake like creature. It is a max of two for the IK uh, to work correctly. But again, you can still use your pause, set your keyframes from there, and it still does move fluidly. You know, like if you've got a flag, you know, you've got a waving flag, and you're a bit waving. It does still have that fluidity to it. Uh, let's delete that. So what we're going to need to do is create the IK constraints for his arms and his legs. So here we'll go, select the ones that we want, and then create an IK constraint at the end of the end of the joint there. And then when we click select. We can move him. It's a lot more fluid. Everything moves where it should. You know, we can then start bringing his arm in. You know, he's, he's just bringing everything as it should, rather than going in, clicking pause, and just trying to pause it like that. It's you know, it's, it's wasted. You know, you're wasting your time. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot lengthier process. So we'll go in, click as bonds that we need, and just IK constraint everything we need. So there we go. Legs in. Looks nice. Works. Got a bit of an issue with that knee, but you see, that's where it comes in handy. That positive there, you know, the thing that I've talked about earlier. So at the moment, the knee bends; it goes wherever it wants. So what we can do is click that positive on the bend here on the left, and it stops that knee bending backwards. You know, it's it, you know, he's never going to bend in in a direction that's that's not correct to your autonomy. Uh, you see, that's that's no one's knee like that unless you you know you're in a fate and someone's brought your knee. But yeah, click bend on that one so the knee only bends in the right way. Same again for this other leg. So select the top bone, select the bottom bone. Your control, make sure we're holding control. If you're not holding control, it's not going to work. You see, if you just click it and we put on your shift, like I, I tend to do, but I'll forget sometimes, I'll hold shift. It doesn't select both. Select the top, hold control, select the bottom, and click, create an IK constraint, and then click positive. So it's only going to move in a natural way that, that a humanoid character would. And he's not going to bend backwards. It works quite well. Uh, so that's all we need for now. Um, if you want to set up the other ones, you're more than welcome to. Um, but that's it. That's how you make for IK constraints. Ready to then take this in to animate the character uh, as we would. You know, you're just messing around here with it. But yeah, if you want to do that, set up what you need to set up. Um, Again, recommend it. Legs, arms. You want to set up one up uh, for this, this hip. Yeah, but you see, it's not necessary. This is the point that you need to get to. If you want to experiment with more, you're more than welcome to. But that's it. We're then going to look into, in the next session, look into uh, actually getting familiar with the animation, getting familiar, more familiar with, with Dragonborns. Uh, but yeah, that's it for now.